Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, then welcome to the channel. In this video, we are looking at my homemade Gracie stand, uh, which is this. And it's basically uh, the bottom half of a mic stand, a good sturdy mic stand, I must add, and a snare stand. And this works a treat to hold a guitar in a playing position. So you can have some more versatility when streaming or live performing if you're playing electric and you want to go over change over to acoustic or you're playing acoustic and you want to add some bass to your loops etc this is the thing now uh, real gracie stands cost a lot of money i did this for about i think about five quid because i already had the mic stand and i got the uh, snare stand at car boot sale so i'll demonstrate how it all works for you here is a look at it without a guitar in, so it is simply a snare stand, like I say, bolted to a mic stand. Uh, where you bolt the snare stand on, you want to make sure that is really, really tight. Um, I have had it slip before, where I haven't tightened it up enough, but the guitar hasn't fallen out onto the floor, so the clamp does hold it in quite well. Um, you could make it quick release if you wanted to, but I've just set it to an angle which suits me for all my guitars, and that's what I keep it at. Uh, and then you use the, uh, obviously, the adjuster here to adjust the clamp to suit the size of the guitar that you're putting in it. Right, so I'm going to demonstrate this with a few guitars. We've got a bass, an acoustic, and my 335 copy. Um, you can adjust the height up and down, obviously, so uh, that's cool if you have got uh, if you use a mic stand that can do that. Uh, for you tall people, if you're a short-ass like me, then you want it right down. Again, you could make it quick release if you want to adjust the angle, but I have made sure that it's solid, doesn't move. Uh, after that one time when it did slip and fall down. I uh, don't want to risk that. Uh, so, first off, we're going to use my bass. So this is what I use it for all the time in the, my live streams. Uh, this is an SG Columbus 1970s something or other uh, copy. It's a short scale bass, but you, I have had a full size, size bass in this. So basically, what I do is open the clamp, offer it up, <coughs> and then just wind the clamp in. So you're not putting any uh, downward pressure onto the claws so you're holding the guitar kind of in mid-air. Um, it does need a little bit of oil on that, or a bit of grease on that to make it smoother, because it's an old rusty clamp, uh, which I could probably do at some point. Anyway, I don't hardly ever take the guitars out of this anyway. Once it's in, it's in. This bass guitar just stays in it all the time. Anyway, and then you just wind it down until that clamps it. Um, and that is basically it. So you want uh, the bottom clamp sort of in the uh, knee cut there and then the rest just takes care of itself um, and once it's in it is in and it swivels around uh, so you can have it anywhere you want to and it's a nice playing position you can slap at the bass off you go that's how I use it all the time that guitar never leaves the clamp it just stays there just gets moved around moved around the studio um, and it's very very sturdy indeed Removing it is even easier. It's just a few turns of that adjuster and it should just pop straight out. Boom. Just like that. Easy peasy. Next up is my acoustics. This is my uh, Fender uh, normal size. What do you call that? Concert size? I don't know. Something like that. But yeah, an average size acoustic guitar, if you like. I've had a jumbo acoustic in this uh, as well. It doesn't like the small travel guitar though. Um, so this is probably one of the as small as it will go for for an acoustic guitar but this is quite a standard size so uh, when you do it with this it's the same uh, process but you will notice because the guitar has a fatter body the uh, the claws won't go over the guitar like it did with the bass guitar instead those will grip the guitar so if you're worried about damaging the finish which i haven't experienced uh, you could put some foam uh, on there just to protect the finish but that's what happens it kind of pinches the guitar uh, you don't want to over tighten it obviously you don't want to crush it but once it's in there it doesn't move it's brilliant and being a very light guitar it's uh, it feels a lot uh, safer than the heavier guitars but the heavier guitars are fine too um and what i find with this is it puts it in a really lovely playing position as well so if you if you've got back problems shoulder problems this could be a solution uh to being able to stand up without using a strap um i found as well so that's how that works. And then uh, obviously taking it off um, is exactly the same as before. You just loosen the little clamp off, a couple of turns, and it will pop right out. Easy peasy. Japa squeezy. Right. Talking about Japa squeezy. This isn't a Japanese one. This is a Korean one. But this is the biggest uh, guitar I have. This is quite a big body. Uh, it's the 335 Columbus copy. 
you can see a video of that on my channel. Uh, so again, I just open it right out uh, as far as it will go and then just offer it up and do the same thing as before. Um, on this guitar, I do have um, a strap button, um, which I don't have on the bass guitar. Too. I've, I've, stole, I've stolen off the bass guitar for a, for a project. But what I, what I tend to do is make sure the strap button is in that sort of underneath that claw there, um, which will stop it uh, tipping, stop, stop it like, uh, what do they call it, uh, headstock diving or whatever, and slipping out. Um, so it's just a bit of added... Uh, security but again it's the same thing just take the pressure off hold the guitar and wind it in and that fits perfect there you go nice job and again it puts it in a really good playing position you can swivel it around and it looks cool on stage people have commented I've done this on stage and people go wow that's amazing what a great idea and you can see you can just walk up to it and schmoodle doo doo schmoodle day <laughs> just like that you can't hear it but never mind alright here's some crappy footage of me using it apologies about that but uh, you get the idea Here's a better demonstration. I've got my bass guitar set up in the Gracie stand. I want to loop some chords on my looper and add some bass to it. This is exactly how I do it. So I've got my uh, basic loop. Uh, just spin the acoustic around my back. Hit record. And off we go. And there you have it. Lots of possibilities, lots of options. Uh, top tip from someone that's been using this for a long time. If you're going to use it on stage, put it to one side of the stage because when people start moving around, it can get knocked over. You don't want to do that. That would be embarrassing and could be expensive. Um, so when I've used it on stage, I've had it off to my right side, depending on which side of the stage I'm on, uh, so I can just walk over and do it. And what I tend to do as well is I tend to have a second microphone uh, up if I've if I've got an acoustic guitar on it, which is usually what I do with the live situation, I have a second microphone so I can go over and play acoustic and sing, and then come out play electric and sing on a separate microphone. Top tip for you. Um, I've been using this for a long time. Like I said, it has never failed me. It's never fallen over. I've never had any problems with it whatsoever. Um, I don't know how many years I've had it. Years. Uh, like I said, cost me about five quid. Um, you can buy. Uh, a mic stand for like £15, which will be good enough, and snare stands, if you look secondhand, eBay, whatever, or buy a new one if you want to. It'll still be a lot cheaper than buying the real thing. But it is the real thing. But it's my thing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I just wanted to share that with you, just in case it was useful for you. Um, do like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, don't forget to come follow me on Twitch. Uh, what else is there? Buy some merch. There's links in the description, all that stuff. It helps me out in a big way, and I promise I will get more content out. I'm just very busy. Anyway, peace till next time. Cue the jingle. One, two, three, four. If you like my YouTube show, hit like and comment and get involved. If you dig my vibe, then hit subscribe. Never miss an episode of my YouTube show. <laughs> Peace. Till next time.